You're watching WCAX Channel 3 Burlington. This is the Channel 3 News Early Morning. Coming up, it's just too close to call. It may be days before we know who will be our next president. No big surprises in Vermont. Governor Dean is re-elected. And we'll also have updates for you on the other races. Good morning. It's Wednesday, November 8th at 6 o'clock. I'm Judy Simpson with Sean Olitsky and Gary Sadowski. What's the weather going to be like today? Are we going to see some sun? <laughs> you know, I, I have this feeling nobody cares about the weather, but we'll give it anyway. <laughs> Luckily, the weather is quiet. Nothing much happening. Cloudy skies right now in Burlington, 44 degrees. The rest of the day going to be mostly cloudy, a lot like yesterday, and high temperatures are going to be 48 to 55. Okay, we're going to go to Shauna. Uh, you know, d don't you feel like you and me should just go home? I know. This all seemed rather <laughs> insignificant, I must say, but that's all right. Let's just get the job done. The Celtics are hammered by the Toronto Raptors. Knicks beat the Bucks, and we begin our week-long preview of the high school state title games. I hope some of them are as close as this election because that would make a great, exciting weekend. <laughs> Thanks a lot to both of you. In the news this morning, people are waking up expecting to find out who the next president is. And they're going to have to keep waiting. Analysts are saying it's just too close to call at this point and that the state of Florida holds the key to this election. Early just before 2.30, polls showed that George W. Bush had a 271 electoral votes Leaving, leaving Vice President Al Gore with 249. But a short time later, officials in Florida said that not all the votes had been tabulated and that the race was not over. Gore had called Bush to concede, but later took his concession back. Officials say there will be a recount in Florida that may take days. Only 1,200 votes separate the candidates. Campaign 2000 in Vermont is now history, and it was topped by Howard Dean's re-election to an unprecedented fifth straight term. In the end, Dean never looked back as he easily overcame the challenge from Ruth Dwyer and the Take Back Vermont movement. Brian Joyce starts our morning election wrap-up. When Howard Dean arrived at Democratic Election Night headquarters at 9.15, two hours after the polls had closed, the race was over. He'd already won. Wonderful. Uh, well, we're not there yet. We're not there yet had already won even though the governor was unwilling to admit it. But once inside, Dean quickly learned the early returns gave him 53% of the vote, 16 points ahead of Republican Ruth Dwyer. <laughs> 30 minutes later, it was all over, officially. Dwyer called Dean in his hotel room to concede. Well, you, do, you ran a great race. Well, you, you ran a great one. <laughs> He gave me everything I could handle, so I appreciate it. Minutes later, at Republican headquarters in Montpelier, Ruth Dwyer moved to the podium to deliver her concession speech to her devoted followers. You couldn't have worked any harder. You really did. The people of Vermont clearly don't believe what we believe, and we got to accept that. What's next for you? I'm just going to go home and let my dogs out of the barn and do chores in the morning. So. Is this it for you for politics? I think so, yeah. Do you think a conservative could ever be elected uh, in the state of Vermont? Probably. Uh, I just, I'm not the right one, I guess, but I think so, someday. Just down the street, long shot third party candidate Anthony Polina looked on the bright side. He didn't win, but he had pulled at least 9% of the vote, much more than the experts predicted, and more than enough to guarantee he'll probably be back again on the progressive ticket. All that discussion about being a spoiler was nonsense. We knew it. It's taken some time for other people to figure it out, that people should vote for the candidates they believe in. And there's no such thing as a spoiler, and this should really put that issue to rest from now on. In his victory speech, Governor Howard Dean made it clear that he wants to close the wounds that were opened by Having the long and sometimes bitter campaign. And to assure every Vermonter that we will work with all Vermonters that we will listen to all Vermonters, and that all Vermonters in the end will be winners. That is our job for the next couple of months. Brian Joyce, Channel 3 News in South Carolina. Here's a look at the numbers. Howard Dean got 50% of the vote, a 12% lead ahead of challenger Ruth Dwyer. Progressive Anthony Polina won 10% of the vote. The First Lady can now be called Senator-elect Hillary Rodham Clinton. The wife of President Clinton has declared victory in her historic quest for the U.S. Senate. Clinton beat Republican Congressman Rick Lazio 55 to 43 percent. 
Mrs. Clinton becomes the first First Lady ever elected to public office. The Senate race in Vermont was never in doubt. Incumbent James Jeffords was re-elected to a third term. Jeffords easily defeated Democratic challenger Ed Flanagan, taking 66% of the vote. Andy Potter has more on that story. Jeffords shared the stage with his campaign staff, claiming a third six-year term. The 66-year-old Republican expressed surprise at the magnitude of his election victory. It was a landslide with two-thirds of the vote. Flanagan, the so-called bulldog, was held to just 26 percent, but said people will recognize his campaign for its accomplishments. I would like them to take a look at this candidate, who as an openly gay man has been elected four times to statewide office, and who as an openly gay man was nominated as the uh, Democratic nominee for the United States Senate. Uh, that was a great privilege. Jeffords's position as a moderate appears to be strengthened since late returns show the Republicans losing as many as three seats, keeping a much slimmer majority. That makes Senate moderates the swing votes. Uh, you could say, well, it's power, but no, it's it's responsibility as you, you carry the weight of the country on your shoulders at times because your vote may make the difference between something passing or not passing. It's a responsibility that Jeffords obviously relishes as he prepares to serve another six years in the Senate. Andy Potter, Channel 3 News, Montpelier. Congressman Bernie Sanders easily won re-election to the U.S. House of Representatives by taking 70 percent of the vote. Sanders held his victory party in Burlington last night. He was happy to get the support of Vermonters from every political party. This is Sanders' fifth term, and he says this time re-election could have benefits in Washington. Does this mean a chairmanship in the House? Well, we are eagerly awaiting the results of the congressional races. Uh, as you know, if the Democrats win, I've been promised the seat on the Appropriations Committee. If the Republicans win, I will be a ranking member of one of the major banking committees. Congressman Sanders says these positions will give him more clout in the House. Also, Burlington Mayor Peter Clavel was at Sanders' victory party, and he says Sanders' landslide victory shows the Progressive Party in Vermont is alive and well. Voters sent incumbent Lieutenant Governor Doug Racine back for another term. With 91% of the precincts reported, Racine took 53% of, of the vote. His challenger, Brian Doobie, took about 42%. And in other election news, Republicans captured control of the Vermont House for the first time in 14 years. Democrats held on to their Senate majority. And it looks like Deb Markowitz will have another term as Vermont's Secretary of State. The latest numbers show Markowitz with a strong lead over challenger Larry Drown. The incumbent secured 61% of the vote, 37% voted for Drown. Jim Douglas easily won his contest for treasurer. Republican Douglas got 83% of the vote. Challenger Clyde Ledu DeLuca rather, received 17%. And the race for auditor favors Elizabeth Reedy. The Democrat is leading her challenger, John Hall, by 10%. Bill Sorrell won his race for attorney general with 91% of the precincts reporting. The numbers show him leading Sandy Wells Ward by 7%, 70% rather. Most races will become final later today. Well, in some parts of the country, voters had to fight the weather to cast their ballots. Up to a foot of snow and power outages did not keep many New Mexico voters from getting to the polls. In Albuquerque, voters cast their ballots by candlelight, and snow plows delivered ballots through blowing snow in other parts of the northern plains. Fortunately, nothing quite so dramatic here. <laughs> no, that's pretty nasty. Yeah, there was some bad weather around the country yesterday for Election Day. Not here, though, and uh, in fact, the weather is staying quiet today, too. Cloudy skies right now in Burlington, 44 degrees. Highs today will be 48 to 55 under mostly cloudy skies. We do have some wet weather on the way, and we'll tell you all about that coming up right after this. shop at Leo's because of our great everyday low pricing, our great selection. And great service. People always say, gee, it's much bigger in here than what we had anticipated from the outside. We carry 25 mattress models on our floor uh, to give our customers a choice of comfort. At Leo's, when you come in one day, you may find something different the next day. We're always changing things. Change is good, but the prices remain the same.
do your part to preserve our clean air. Join a car or van pool today so everyone can get happy. Today, it's easier than ever to do your banking, especially at Chittenden Bank. Now, business owners access Chittenden's commercial services through their PCs. Chittenden customers get financial information online, access their accounts through the phone, and enjoy the convenience and security of electronic banking. Because at Chittenden Bank, we're connected to the customer in more ways than ever before. Local ownership makes all the difference in the world. I know the people that I'm working for, and I know they stand behind the job that I'm doing. We don't have to answer to some big corporation that lives outside of the state that doesn't understand Vermont's values. Vermonters understand how important that is when they watch our news and see that we really do care because we are a part of the community. It's just all about what we can do for the viewers. My big question is, when are we going to see some sun? Well, yeah, that's a big question. I think people sh should have been able to vote for some sunshine yesterday <laughs> along with everything else, because I think we would have voted ourselves a couple of rays of sunshine during the day anyway, but it really never happened. Uh, today, a lot like yesterday, maybe a couple of degrees warmer. That's really about it. Let's see what's happening in Burlington right now. Skies are cloudy. The temperature is 44 degrees. Our dew point is 40, and that gives us 86% relative humidity. Pressure at 30.09 inches, holding steady there, and winds barely blowing. The sun will be up at 639 and set at 433 this afternoon. On Lake Champlain, the winds will be light. The waves just about calm. Lake level at 94.22 feet. The water temperature, 48 degrees. Temperatures outside, nothing spectacular. A lot of us starting out in the low to uh, mid-40s in the northern section. A couple of 30s out there, like Sherbrooke, up at 39 degrees. 37 degrees at Saranac Lake down to the south. Again, more low to mid-40s, but a couple of 30s showing up. 37 degrees at Concord. And back at Albany, 39 degrees. Panning out around the rest of the northeast, similar temperatures just about everywhere. A couple of warmer spots. That's way back to the west. A couple of 50s at Buffalo and Toronto. Nothing on the radar. We expect to see dry weather during the day today, but there will be some of those clouds around. Like yesterday, boy, we couldn't buy a ray of sunshine around here. We're still in between a couple of storm systems. That one that's been off the coast, that's finally pulling off to the east now. We're not really too concerned about that. But there's that great big storm system that's hitting the Midwest and uh, that's what brought the blizzard-like conditions to the Dakotas and uh, northern Minnesota yesterday and down to the south too a winter storm raging as we just heard in parts of New Mexico and northern Texas a foot of heavy wet snow that made voting difficult not only that this is the cold air and just ahead of that very warm air juicy air and that's bringing severe weather to parts of uh, eastern Texas Louisiana and Arkansas I think we have severe thunderstorm and tornado watches out for that neck of the woods. All this rain, well, it has its eyes set on us, but not during the day today. It's going to take until tomorrow late in the day before that catches up to us. This high pressure just down to our south, well, it's a weak area of high pressure. It's enough to keep it dry around here, but not enough to really clear the clouds out. Again, today we may see a couple of peaks of sunshine, but that's really about it. This part of the storm system, well, that's going to head up into Canada, and we're not too worried about that. It's this low that's going to be riding up into the Tennessee Valley, the Ohio Valleys, and pushing in our direction, that's going to thicken up the clouds during the day tomorrow and then bring some rain tomorrow night, and that's going to last really into Friday, too. The good news is it should be out of here for the most part for the weekend. Let's check out that forecast then. Today, just a mostly cloudy day with high temperatures of 48 to 55. Tonight, mostly cloudy skies, 38 to 45 for lows. And tomorrow, we'll see those clouds thicken up. The rain developing late in the day, starting in the western sections and then moving eastward. Highs tomorrow will be in the mid-50s. Thursday night into the first part of Friday, we could see some pretty good rain coming down, tapering off a little bit by the end of the day on Friday with 48 to 55 for highs. And Saturday, maybe a leftover sprinkle here and there, but we should see a little bit of sunshine and then a mix of sun and clouds on Sunday. Highs coming down just a notch in the 40s over the weekend. So all in all, real typical November-like weather, but, uh, you know, at least no snowstorms for us. Okay, thanks a lot, Gary. Well, still to come, teaching the next generation about the power of the vote, but first, a bad habit that may make you nervous. Details in Health Watch next. We're going to have such a wonderful life together. We'll discover so many magical things. No matter how big you get, 
You'll always be my little baby. And you'll promise I'll always be the most important girl in your life. When you bring your film to Kinney Drugs for processing, reprints, or enlargements, we'll treat every picture as that one special moment of a lifetime. Because chances are, to you it is. You know what I love about this place? Breakfast. I can have all the smooth, creamy Philadelphia cream cheese I want. Mm. A bagel without Philadelphia should be considered a sin. Just a suggestion. Don't let the need for new appliances take a bite out of your budget this holiday season. Wholesale Express has stocked up on year-end closeouts at really great prices. Like Whirlpool dishwashers starting at $2.59 and a terrific selection of Whirlpool gas or electric ranges. With factory rebates still in effect, you can save even more. And right now, with your Whirlpool closeout purchase, you'll get a holiday turkey free. Quantities are limited. Hurry in to Wholesale Express. Bye-bye retail when you can buy Wholesale Express. Linex custom truck bed liners are at Yipes Stripes. Rigid drop-in liners shift and vibrate, grinding away your investment. Linex eliminates this problem with its revolutionary polyurethane liner. Linex is sprayed on to fit the contours of your truck bed. Linex seals out air and water, eliminating rust and corrosion. And a Linex bed liner is tough. It absorbs impact and protects cargo. An outdated product or the new technological standard? Choose Linex, available only at Yipes Stripes, home of the AstroStar car starter. Next, Rosie, she's a diehard fan. Give me Allie McBeal! Now Rosie talks to Calista Flockhart herself, plus Laverne and Squiggy, Penny Marshall, and David L. Lander. Next, Rosie. And on November 13th, for the first time on Rosie, Jim Carrey. Today at 4 on Channel 3. Smoking can make you anxious. Dr. Dave Nida has more on that in this morning's Health Watch. Most people say they smoke because it helps calm their nerves, relieves anxiety. Well, it turns out that rather than taking the edge off, smoking may make that case of the nerves a lot worse. A study in the Journal of the American Medical Association says chemicals in tobacco can wind up causing anxiety, panic attacks, and phobias, especially in those who take up the habit as teenagers. And unfortunately, besides being hooked on smokes, the adult then stays a nervous Nelly for life. Now let's say you don't smoke, you've got low cholesterol, low blood pressure, you exercise every day and you say, hey, there's no way I'm going to have a heart attack. Well, sorry, the good life is no guarantee, but a healthy life may be. Two, two studies from the American Heart Association says three common germs may be a major trigger of heart attacks, and those germs include some that cause things like cold sores and common respiratory infections. Researchers believe these infections inflame the lining of the heart arteries, leading to a faster buildup of heart blockages. And finally today, you may want to weigh your child's backpack. And if it weighs more than 10 to 15 pounds, your child is at risk not only for a sore back, but also for falls and fractures, just like happens to older people with balance problems. This report incidentally comes from the American Academy of Physical Medicine. That's a look at some of the day's top health stories. I'm Dr. Dave Nida for CBS News. Well, more heartache from the hardwood. This time in Canada. The Celtics head north. We have the highlights. Stick around. But first, Gary will have the forecast right after this break. Are your heating bills going through the roof? That's what's happening if your attic is under-insulated. Allen Lumber can help. We've got Owens Corning pink fiberglass insulation for attics. Installation is easy. Just add R30 fiberglass insulation over your existing attic insulation and increase your savings and comfort year-round. Put your whole house in the pink with fiberglass insulation from Owens Corning. On sale now at Allen Lumber. You can trust with every sale. Allen Lumber. Everybody knows Burlington Bedrooms has the best selection, quality, and price in alternative sleep systems. But did you know they have over 25 bedroom sets on display to choose from? They have all the latest styles, offering you the lowest prices and a commitment to quality. Let their staff find exactly what you need. You'll be amazed with their selection of maple, cherry, pine, and oak bedroom sets. With 25 different sets to choose from, most are in stock and ready for immediate free delivery. Visit them today. You're sure to find it all at Burlington Bedrooms. 
Good morning. It's 44 degrees in Burlington. Most of us starting out the day with temperatures in the low to mid 40s. A couple of 30s out there. Sherbrooke is at 39 degrees and way back at Saranac Lake, 37 degrees. Down to the south, more of the same. Low to mid 40s. We've got a 39 though at Albany and 37 degrees at Concord. Couldn't buy a ray of sunshine during the day yesterday and we've still got plenty of clouds out there so don't look for a lot of sunshine today too. Maybe a peak or two. At least the clouds are not going to drop anything. Not today anyway, but uh, we're looking for some wet weather to come in here late in the day tomorrow. Let's check out that forecast then. Today is just going to be mostly cloudy. High temperatures will be 48 to 55. Tonight mostly cloudy. Lows of 38 to 45. And tomorrow those clouds will thicken up and the rain will develop west to east late in the day. Highs tomorrow will be in the mid 50s. get around these parts, they say you need dogs. Good thing I got my Subaru Outback. It's got loads of cargo space, toasty seat warmers, and something you won't find on your average sport utility. The added traction of full-time all-wheel drive. It's the perfect way to get around, even when you're way out here. Now, as for the dogs, they're not much help if you ask me. Outback, the world's first sport utility wagon. Finish skiing, huh? What is that in your cup? It's a Dunkachino. Hey, you want one? There's a Dunkin' Donuts right down the hill. I'll... Why not? Great. Can I get you anything else? A dozen roses. Some people will do just about anything for the creamy mocha taste of Dunkachino. Substitute your coffee for a Dunkachino with any combo at no extra charge. A fantastic football weekend on the way. I know, can't wait, and we're taking a look ahead. Division 4 is where we start our week-long preview of the high school football state title games. After losing last year's title game, U32 has steamrolled its way back for another shot. They'll face a Mount Abraham squad playing just its second year of varsity football. Mike McCune has the details. When you're undefeated and you've won your games by an average score of 38 to 9, it would be hard to blame U32 if they're a little overconfident going into Friday's state title game with Mount Abraham. But the Raiders' coaches will try to make sure that doesn't happen. You know, I try to keep the team really focused. You know, I'm very proud of what they've done. We've never been undefeated ever at this school. I mean, we played for the state title last year, and nobody gave us a shot, and we did not play well. And from my standpoint, I don't plan to let it go that way this year. And while the players have taken their coaches' words to heart, they carry about them the quiet confidence of a squad that knows it's been the best in D4 this season. We beat them twice, but we're not going to take them lightly. We're going to go full bore like we have every game this year. It's definitely going to be a challenge. they got a good team, but I think we got a better team we can play with them. We all have the physical strength and, you know, what it takes, but we just need to be in the game mentally. Defense is the biggest part of the game. I mean, if you can hold them, eventually you're going to score. If we just keep moving the ball, and we have a lot of strong running backs and uh, blockers in the offensive line. To say that Mount Abraham is just happy to be in this title game would be doing the Eagles a disservice. But still, after an 0-7 start in their first years of varsity program last year, to be playing for a state championship in just their second year of varsity football is quite an accomplishment. It's nice to be playing football here and start a tradition here. But if we're going to start a football tradition, we would like to have a winning tradition. We've been really fortunate to get to that point where we really indeed expect to win when we take the field. Mount A beat everyone they faced this season other than the Raiders and are hoping the third time's the charm against U32. We feel pretty confident. Last time we know we could have worked a lot better as a team and just going through this game knowing that we can play as a team and come away hopefully with this victory. We're psyched because... We don't, we don't have a very big team. We have 16, 17 people, and everybody else seems to have larger teams than us. And, you know, we went, didn't win a single game last year, and this year going into the finals, it's, it's a great feeling. And to the NBA Celtics north of the border in Toronto. And we're going to get your Celtics highlight out of the way. Randy Brown beats Paul Pierce for the dunk. But this game belongs to Air Canada. And off the feet for Mark Jackson, Vince Carter with the flush, and the seas fall 105-75. 
Knicks in Milwaukee to face the Bucks, and we have some nice ball movement by the Knicks. And behind Allen Houston's 24 points, New York rolls past the Bucks, 103-89. And the best rookie in the National League as we go to some baseball is Atlanta shortstop Raphael for call. He was an easy winner for Rookie of the Year honors. Yeah, not much of a surprise. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, Shana. Well, still to come this morning, turning the next generation on to voting. If you've been injured and you're trying to settle with the insurance company on your own, you've got a lot to lose. I'm Jerry O'Neill. Dealing with the insurance company can be difficult. They want you to settle for as little as possible, and they have plenty of resources. You need O'Neill Crawford & Green's know-how on your side to even the odds. O'Neill Crawford & Green, our experience gets results. Call us, 865-4700, for a free consultation. Oh, yes, a brilliant move. Galway scampering across the goal to stop it. So they just couldn't seem to get enough players forward before. He's showing good fluid movement. To the right, the left. This is another aggressive charge down the flank. He's timed his run to absolute perfection. Two defenders to beat. He's passed one. This is looking like a chance as he takes the shot in. Three, four, five, six, seven, oh, sorry. and eight. Go! Every day your car faces another road test. If you want your car to pass it, get the brake, shock, and muffler service that always makes the grade. Get the Meineke. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. Get the stopping power you need and the savings you want during the Meineke brake sale. For a limited time, save 50% off lifetime brake pads and shoes at Meineke. At Meineke, you won't pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. Well, this election year, some young voters learned the value of casting their ballot. Tuesday, Kids Voting Vermont lets children go to the polls just like their parents. The program is designed to increase voter participation in the future by letting kids get involved now. Organizers say it also boosts current voter participation while excited kids push their parents to vote. And the kids we talk to take their civic duty pretty seriously. Who'd you vote for for governor? Um, I can't tell. I think it's kind of cool that kids and people can choose who they want as president and senator and stuff. I mean, I'm going to vote when I'm 18, whether I did this or not. But some people might not have, and this might have gotten them to vote when they're 18. Kids Voting Vermont took place at 47 different schools. About 15,000 students participated. Wow, they're getting a good lesson this year, aren't they? Oh, exactly. I mean, with what's would've... going on with the presidential exactly. race, th that doesn't prove that one vote counts. I don't know what it does. <laughs> exactly. It'd be nice to be able to vote on the weather. You yeah, know, it would uh, be. But yeah. unfortunately, the weather is... I want clouds. Oh, you want clouds? Yeah. You're crazy. You I'm win. I'm kidding. <laughs> I figure I'll win that way. So. You win. Today is going to be a lot like yesterday when we uh, really saw no sunshine. Maybe a peak or two of sunshine during the day. Today, highs will be 48 to 55. Tomorrow, cloudy, too. And, in fact, late in the day, we're going to get some rain showers move in here. That goes for Thursday night and into much of Friday as well, tapering off a little bit by the end of the day Friday. Hopefully, we will dry out for the weekend. Maybe a lingering shower on Saturday. Otherwise, a mix of sun and clouds over the weekend with highs in the 40s. So, at least that's good news for a change. Get the, all the bad weather out of the way on Friday. That's refreshing. <laughs> okay. Well, coming up in our next half hour, more election news. Plus, we'll take you to an Olympic training session. Stay with us. Garbage can be a smelly business, but if something stinks more than your trash, it's time for a change. Myers knows garbage. They remove it easily and quickly. Residential, commercial, weekly pickups or roll-offs, Myers has a brand new fleet of trucks and canisters ready to serve you. Myers. The rest are just garbage. Call Myers. We're the Red Can family. One of the major furniture sales of the season is in progress at Vermont Furniture Galleries in Williston. 
Free holiday sale 2000 with every item in the store reduced. Open special hours each day. And you can buy with no down payment, no interest, and no monthly payment for one full year. Save on furniture for every room in your home if you buy now during the pre-holiday sale at Vermont Furniture Galleries, 10 Blair Park, Taft's Corners in Williston. Don't miss the savings. Where do you go to get the best deals? Right here at the Crossroads, during Toyota's 11th annual Thanksgiving sales event, where you can lease a Camry for only $2.29 a month for 48 months, which is $19.54 due at signing, or buy and save up to $1,120, or save up to $1,000 on Toyota Sienna. Get down to the Crossroads now. The Thanksgiving sales event ends November 30th at your New England Toyota dealer. Leave the Crossroads of American value. You're watching WCAX Channel 3 Burlington. This is the Channel 3 News Early Morning. Coming up, we may not know for a while who is going to be president. It's just too close to call. There are celebrations in Vermont. Incumbents win big. And the road to the Special Olympics starts here. Good morning. It's Wednesday, November 8th at 6.30. I'm Judy Simpson with Sean Alitsky and Gary Sadowski and more clouds. Tell That's right. me, you can't break out of this pattern. Yeah, but at least one thing, it, it's nice to uh, have the weather easier to predict than the election outcome. <laughs> Cloudy skies in Burlington right now, the temperature 44 degrees, highs today 48 to 55 under mostly cloudy skies. That was easy, the election oh. won't be. <laughs> I know. Uh, did anybody play anything yesterday? Yes, yes, sports really? goes on throughout sports it all. On. We need a break from the election. Well, sort of. <laughs> the Celtics are hammered by the Toronto Raptors. Knicks beat the Bucks. And we begin our week-long preview of the high school football state title games. I said this earlier, but I just hope some of these games this weekend are as close as this election because that's going to just make a thrilling weekend around the state. Very exciting. Thanks a lot to both of you. In the news this morning, it is an election that will go down in the history books. Right now, George W. Bush and Al Gore are in a, statistic, a statistical dead heat, too close to declare a winner. All eyes are on Florida this morning because it's still the last big state not counted. Teresa Stasio begins our coverage in Texas with Bush. A short time ago, the square right behind me here in front of the state capitol was packed with hundreds of people, but not now. Supporters have gone home. The Bush campaign is focusing on that recount, but make no mistake, no one is giving up home. The Bush supporters believe that Bush will still win the White House. Thousands of Bush supporters stood in the rain outside the state house in Austin, riding an emotional roller coaster all night into the early morning. Last night, the networks declared Al Gore the winner in Florida. Then that was retracted because of faulty data. Shortly after 2 a.m., Bush was declared the winner in Florida. About two hours later, the Florida Secretary of State declared that only 630 votes separated the two candidates, and that talk of a winner might be premature. Governor Bush spent the evening watching the returns being tallied on television with his parents, saying it is not over until it's over. The networks call this thing awfully early, but the people actually counting the votes are coming up with a little different perspective. And so... Uh, we're pretty darn upbeat about things. Within a short time, the crowd outside the state capitol here went from loud partying to quiet reflection, realizing that George W. Bush may not have won the 270 electoral votes he needs after all. Now, the square might be empty behind me, but they are not going to be tearing down that podium because many here still plan on celebrating. That is the latest in regards to the Bush campaign. Now let's go to Drew Levinson with the Gore campaign. Drew. Well, thank you, Teresa. Here in Nashville, as in Austin, it has been a night and a morning of emotional twists. And right now, there is no way the vice president is conceding anything. For the crowd in Tennessee, it was just one more bizarre twist in a bizarre night. Thousands of Gore supporters waited in the rain for what appeared to be the vice president's concession speech. But then, one last glimmer of hope. There is a margin of only about 1,200 votes out of millions cast with over 5,000 votes left to be counted. With the final tally from Florida still up in the air, Gore and his family huddled inside the War Memorial Plaza in downtown Nashville. The crowd went into an uproar when an imminent concession speech was delayed. And until the results, the recount is concluded and the results of Florida, Florida become official, our campaign continues. Yeah! 
And it will still be some time until we know exactly who the next president of the United States will be. That was Drew Levinson reporting, and we will, of course, keep you updated on this developing story. In local election news, Howard Dean was easily reelected to an unprecedented fifth straight term. Dean got 50% of the vote, a 12% lead ahead of challenger Ruth Dwyer. Progressive Anthony Polina won 10% of the vote. Dean overcame the challenge from Ruth Dwyer and the Take Back Vermont movement. Tears fell from Dwyer supporters as she conceded early in the night. In his acceptance speech, Dean says that he's ready to move the state forward. And to assure every Vermonter that we will work with all Vermonters, that we will listen to all Vermonters, and that all Vermonters in the end will be winners. That is our job for the next couple of months. Across town, long-shot third-party candidate Anthony Polino looked on the bright side. He didn't win, but he pulled 10% of the vote, much more than experts had predicted, and more than enough to guarantee that he'll be back again on the progressive ticket. The Senate race in Vermont was never in doubt. Incumbent James Jeffords was re-elected to a third term. Jeffords easily defeated Democratic challenger Ed Flanagan, taking 66% of the vote. It was a landslide with two-thirds of the vote. Flanagan, the so-called bulldog, was held to just 26%, but said people will recognize his campaign for its accomplishments. Jeffords' position as a moderate appears to be strengthened since late returns show the Republicans losing as many as three seats. You could say, well, it's power, but no, it's, it's responsibility as you, you carry the weight of the country on your shoulders at times because your vote may make the difference between something passing or not passing. Jefford says that he will continue to fight for Social Security and affordable health care. Jean Shaheen has won re-election to a third term as governor of New Hampshire. Shaheen beat back a challenge from former state and U.S. Senator Gordon Humphrey. She won 49% to 44% of the vote. Shaheen's re-election ends a 30-year tradition of gubernatorial candidates promising to veto an income tax. She took the anti-tax pledge in her earlier campaigns, but this time she refused, saying she had to keep her options open to deal with a huge budget shortfall. Civil unions may have prompted many Vermonters to vote this year, but the law also sent people in other states to the polls. Residents of Nebraska and Nevada passed a measure to prohibit gay marriage and civil unions. In Maine, voters considered a move to make it a crime to discriminate against a person based on their sexual orientation. That measure failed. And now let's take a look at some of this morning's other news. Prosecutors are trying to block the pretrial release of a Burlington man accused of murder. Walter LeClaire has been held on $100,000 bail since March of last year when he was charged with killing a baby girl in his Burlington home. According to court records on Tuesday, a family friend loaned bail money to LeClaire. LeClaire could be released in two weeks, but county prosecutors have already filed a request to hold him without bail. They claim he's a risk to flee because he's facing a possible life sentence. A judge is scheduled to hear the bail argument next week. Well, at least one man suffered burns in a fire at a Brattleboro lumber mill yesterday evening. Fire officials say the three-alarm fire at the Sersosimo lumber mill broke out around 6.30 last night. Authorities are not releasing the identity of the injured man, but they do say he's an employee at the mill. The cause of the fire is still unknown, but officials say it does not appear to be suspicious. A 12-year-old has confessed to making a bomb threat at the Neshobe School in Brandon. The school was evacuated on March 29th. No bomb was found. An FBI investigation identified the student by studying the handwriting on the note. The student could face up to two years in prison and a $5,000 fine. Well, let's take a look at the weather. I guess today is going to be a whole lot like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. The votes are in. People want sunshine, <laughs> but uh, tough. <laughs> the weather is not a democracy. We're uh, seeing cloudy skies right now in Burlington. 44 degrees, our temperature. It's just going to stay mostly cloudy again today like it was yesterday. 48 to 55 for high temperatures. There's some wet weather on the way. That's coming in tomorrow. We'll tell you all about it right after this. When you're a Consumer's Digest Best Buy four years straight, that's something special. Introducing the 2001 Buick Century Special Edition with standard V6 power, four-wheel ABS, dual climate control, and more. Now with a $1,250 value. Or check out the 2001 Buick LeSabre Special Edition with power seats, aluminum wheels, traction control, and now a special $1,250 value. No wonder LeSabre is America's best-selling full-size car. Come see something special at your Buick dealer today. Teamwork. When you're trying to reach a goal, teamwork is what makes the difference. 
Teamwork makes the difference with the Vermont Health Plan, too. The Vermont Health Plan puts you and your doctor together as a team. So together, you can make health decisions that are right for you. A simple idea that's making a big impact. Of course, Vermonters are known for their common sense. The Vermont Health Plan. Like Vermont, it's different. Just what makes your new Peak Treasures ice cream so different? Let's get some expert opinions. Experts agree, it's the taste. Deliciously different flavor combinations. Each Peak Treasures flavor combines rich, creamy ice cream with mouth-watering treasures like sweet caramel cups, chewy chocolate brownies, or pure natural vanilla. It takes ice cream to new heights. Peak Treasures all-natural ice cream. It's all here on Vermont's own More clouds. Yeah, it is. At least the weather's quiet, you know, with all the excitement that's going on with the elections. Uh, at least we don't have any storms to talk about. It's just pretty much the same old, same old. It's November and it's cloudy. That's the way it usually works. Right now in Burlington, it's cloudy. Our temperature is 44 degrees. The dew point 40. That gives us 86% relative humidity. Pressure holding steady at 30.07 inches. Winds picked up just a bit now out of the east at 6 miles per hour. Sunrise was at 639 just about two minutes ago, and it will set tonight at 433. Out on Lake Champlain, the winds will be light and the waves hardly any. Lake level at 94.22 feet and the water temperature 48 degrees. Here are some of the temperatures in the northern sections right now. Most of us starting out the day in the low to mid 40s, 41 Morrisville, 42 St. J. A couple of 30s out there, 39 degrees at Sherbrooke and back at Saranac Lake. Of course, a little chillier always, 37 degrees there down to the south, more in the way of those low to mid 40s and a little cooler, 38 over at Concord. Panning out around the rest of the northeast, pretty much similar temperatures just about everywhere. A little uh, warmer back to the west. We've got a couple of 50s showing up at Toronto and at Buffalo. Nothing too extreme, but uh, that's the way it's going to stay for the rest of the day. We'll get a couple of degrees warmer today than we did yesterday, but that's really about it. As far as sunshine, though, hmm, maybe a ray or two of sunshine, which is more than we had yesterday, and that's because we're still squeezed in between two big storm systems. Of course, there's that one that was out in the ocean that's still tracking slowly off to the east. We're not really being affected by that one anymore, but now we've got that big mess in the Midwest that's starting to push our way, and this made for some pretty bad weather for election day yesterday in some parts of the country particularly the northern plains the dakotas northern minnesota blizzard-like conditions not a lot of snow but it was blowing up there wind chills were in the 20s below zero this is where the heaviest of the snow fell actually in parts of new mexico and northern texas as much as a foot of heavy wet snow still coming down in parts of oklahoma and texas right now and ahead of that well we've got much warmer air and we've got some strong thunderstorms taking place in fact we've got severe thunderstorm and tornado watches out for a lot of eastern Texas and into Louisiana, southern Arkansas as well. All this rain, well, it has its sights set on us, but not today. It's going to take until late in the day tomorrow before it catches up to us. This high pressure is acting as kind of a block. It's keeping us dry up here in the northeast, but not really strong enough to break up the clouds. We may see, again, just a couple of peaks of sunshine during the day. This part of the storm system, well, that's going to head up into Canada. This is the one that we're keeping our eyes on. That's going to be riding up through the Tennessee Valley, the Ohio Valley, and pushing in our direction. That'll thicken up the clouds during the day tomorrow start to bring some rain in here by tomorrow night and that's going to last into Friday as well. The good news, it should get out of here by the time the weekend rolls around. Let's check out that forecast and the rest of today, mostly cloudy skies, 48 to 55 for high temperatures. Tonight too, mostly cloudy, 38 to 45 for lows and tomorrow, watch those clouds thicken up. The rain will be developing late in the day, starting in the western sections and then moving eastward. Highs tomorrow will be in the mid 50s. Thursday night is when we'll see, I think, the heaviest to the rain and that'll last into the first part of Friday. It should start to taper off late in the day on Friday and maybe a lingering shower on Saturday. Otherwise, we'll see a mix of sun and clouds and that goes for Sunday as well. Temperatures coming down just a notch over the weekend. Highs in the 40s, but that's pretty seasonable. Uh, you know, November is our cloudiest month statistically and boy, we 
you've sure gotten a taste of that yesterday. Definitely. Thanks a lot, Gary. Well, still to come, training hard to bring Olympic gold to the Green Mountains, but first, sleuthing to stop a big jewelry heist. If you're even considering new furniture, don't miss the Total Home Center's inventory control sale going on now. Save up to 70% on selected closeouts and discontinued items by Lane, Lazy Boy, Broyhill, Sealy, and more in furniture. All sofas, all recliners, all bedding, all bedrooms, all dinettes, all floor covering, everything store-wide. Plus, make no down payment and then pay no interest for one full year till November of 2001. Save up to 70% during the giant inventory control sale now through November 12th at the Total Home Center, I-89, St. Albans. Disney presents a fantastic journey into the imagination. Now you can experience it all in a brand new full-length feature. It's a breathtaking celebration of sight, sound, and magic. From the animators that brought you Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, and Aladdin, Fantasia 2000, rated G, coming to video and Disney DVD November 14th. Kramer gives Raquel Welch the boot. Well, you're fired because you don't use your arms when you tap dance. You're like a gorilla out there. I gotta go. And Elaine gets ready to drop the gloves. Cat fight. Wow. Cat fight? What is so appealing to men about a cat fight? Yeah, cat fight. Hold on to your hats. Aren't you Raquel Welch? You know who I am. You're going down. For the next... Cat fight with Raquel Welch. They don't cat fight. Seinfeld. Today at 5 on Channel 3. This stock report is brought to you by Chittenden Investment Services, offering a variety of banking and investment services. As a leading money manager in northern New England, Chittenden Bank has helped people build assets for nearly a century. And knowing that every investor leans a little differently toward tomorrow, we offer the Chittenden Investment Advisory Account. Whether you're a seasoned investor or you've never invested before, it could be just the investment service for you, no matter which way you happen to lean. For more information, contact Chittenden Investment Services. The Dow, a down day on Wall Street Tuesday. The Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P 500 all lost points. For local stocks, AT&T, General Electric, and IBM all climbed. Verizon fell. Bank North and Chittenden were down. IDX and merchants closed up. Police in England foiled a plan to a big jewelry heist with a plot worthy of a James Bond movie. British police say thieves smashed their way into London's Millennium Dome with plans to grab $500 million worth of diamonds from a priceless exhibit. But Scotland Yard found out about the plot, and officers were waiting inside dressed as cleaners. They arrested 11 people without ever firing a shot. Wow. Yeah. I've always amazing. wanted to see the inside of that dome, but, I, you know, I don't think I'm going to break it. <laughs> no, no that wouldn't be a good idea. Yeah. All right. Well, the high school football season reaches its peak. We begin our week-long look ahead at championship weekend. But first, Gary will have another look at the forecast right after this break. What's new? Your JCPenney credit card with your initial. Use your JCPenney card now and save an extra 10%. It's all inside. Personalize your world. JCPenney. Introducing the latest in all-weather gear from L.L. Bean. It's warm, waterproof, and rugged. It's the new L.L. Bean Edition Outback from Subaru. With full-time all-wheel drive, classic L.L. Bean styling, and a new powerful six-cylinder engine that makes the toughest drive a walk in the woods. The L.L. Bean Edition Outback, new from Subaru. Arca, sold separately. Only from Maxwell House. Good morning. It's 44 degrees in Burlington. Most of us starting out the day in the low to mid 40s. We've got a couple of upper 30s out there, both in the northern sections and down to the south as well. We hope for a little bit of sunshine on Election Day yesterday, but uh, we never got it. Our uh, percentage of sunshine yesterday was a whopping 0%. And don't look for a lot of sun during the day today either. Still a lot of clouds out there. Maybe a quick peak of sunshine, but that's really about it. At least it'll stay dry. That will change by late in the day tomorrow. Let's check out the forecast. Today is just going to be most 
mostly cloudy with highs of 48 to 55. Tonight, mostly cloudy, 38 to 45 for lows, and tomorrow those clouds will thicken up. We'll see rain developing late in the day, starting in the west, moving to the east. Highs tomorrow will be in the mid-50s. prices at the Home Depot mean that you can be confident that you're going to walk into our store and find the best price in town. If you find a better price anywhere else, we'll beat that price. No questions asked. We will match it and then beat it. That's our guarantee. Day in and day out. Everybody says they got the lowest price. Not only do we have the guaranteed low price, we also have the knowledgeable salespeople on the floor to help you. We want to be the best price, the best customer service, the best quality product. We want to have the best of everything. You would be out of your mind if you shop someplace else. Tonight, Vermont's own Channel 3 News brings you a special report that could change the way you think about women in uniform. Kristen Kelly takes an intimate look at five very different people and how their lives are defined by what they wear. We'll take you behind the stereotypes for a personal glimpse at some ordinary women who lead extraordinary lives. It's a Channel 3 special report you won't want to miss. Watch Women in Uniform tonight on Vermont's own Channel 3 News. Experience you can trust. What's that saying? You can't tell the players without a scorecard? Sure. Yeah, if that's the saying, then that's the saying. Okay. <laughs> Division 4 is where we start our week-long preview of the high school football state title games. After losing last year's title game, U32 has steamrolled its way back for another shot. They'll face a Mount Abraham squad playing just its second year of varsity football. Mike McCune has the details. When you're undefeated and you've won your games by an average score of 38 to 9, it would be hard to blame U32 if they're a little overconfident going into Friday's state title game with Mount Abraham. But the Raiders' coaches will try to make sure that doesn't happen. You know, I've tried to keep the team really focused. You know, I'm very proud of what they've done. We've never been undefeated ever at this school. I mean, we played for the state title last year, and nobody gave us a shot, and we did not play well. And from my standpoint, I don't plan to let it go that way this year. And while the players have taken their coaches' words to heart, they carry about them the quiet confidence of a squad that knows it's been the best in D4 this season. We beat them twice, but we're not going to take them lightly. We're going to go full bore like we have every game this year. It's definitely going to be a challenge. they got a good team, but I think we got a better team we can play with them. We all have the physical strength and, you know, what it takes, but we just need to be in the game mentally. Defense is the biggest part of the game. I mean, if you can hold them, eventually you're going to score. If we just keep moving the ball, and we have a lot of strong running backs and uh, blockers in the offensive line. To say that Matt Abraham is just happy to be in this title game would be doing the Eagles a disservice. But still, after an 0-7 start in their first year's of varsity program last year, to be playing for a state championship in just their second year of varsity football is quite an accomplishment. It's nice to be playing football here and start a tradition here. But if we're going to start a football tradition, we would like to have a winning tradition. We've been really fortunate to get to that point where we really indeed expect to win when we take the field. Mount A beat everyone they face this season other than the Raiders and are hoping the third time's the charm against U32. We feel pretty confident. Last time we know we could have worked a lot better as a team and just going through this game knowing that we can play as a team and come away hopefully with this victory. We're psyched because... We, are, we don't have a very big team. We have 16, 17 people, and everybody else seems to have larger teams than us. And, you know, we went, didn't win a single game last year, and this year going into the finals, it's, it's a great feeling. All right, thanks, Mike. And to the NBA Celtics north of the border in Toronto. We're going to start you off with the Celtics highlight because there weren't too many. Randy Brown beats Paul Pierce for the dunk. But this game belongs to Air Canada. Off the feed from Mark Jackson. Vince Carter with the flush, and the Celtics fall 105 to 75. Knicks in Milwaukee to face the Bucks, and we have some nice ball movement here by the Knicks. And behind Al Houston's 24 points, New York rolls past the Bucks, 103-89. And the best rookie in the National League is Atlanta shortstop Raphael for call. He has, uh, he was an easy winner for Rookie of the Year honors. Hey, well, there you have it. Okay, thanks a lot, Shauna. Well, coming up next, training for Olympic gold and the experience of a lifetime.
Make holiday memories with the help of Ben Franklin Crafts. Let it snow today with item of the month 13 ounce spray snow. Over 50% off, only 77 cents. Save now on hard to find alpine trees, assorted sizes starting at just $4.99. Holiday chunky stamps make decorating fun for adults and children. Right now, only 88 cents. For holiday memories that last a lifetime, hurry into Ben Franklin Crafts. The fun's just begun at Ben Franklin Crafts. It's Superstore Furniture's $21,000 giveaway with your chance to win $1,000 a month and $10,000 a year's end. Vermont's largest Lazy Boy Gallery is making you an incredible limited time offer. Right now, pick a pair of Lazy Boys and get two great chairs for one low price. That's right. Choose your pair from over 100 great Lazy Boy recliners and pay one low price. Then get your pair with no interest for one full year. In fact, pay no interest for one year on everything in the store. All during Superstore Furniture's $21,000 giveaway. Where do you go to get the best deals? Right here at the Crossroads, during Toyota's 11th annual Thanksgiving sales event. See the all-new Tacoma Double Cab with four doors, room for five. Or lease Tacoma 4x4 for $199 a month for 36 months with just $19.74 due at signing. Or save on a Tundra, it's a best buy. Get down to the Crossroads now. The Thanksgiving sales event ends November 30th at your New England Toyota dealer. Leave the Crossroads now. of American Value. In March, they'll travel to Alaska for the Special Olympic Winter Games. But some of the newer athletes needed help getting ready. Kristen Carlson and photographer Kika Bronger take us away from the campaign trail to the training trail. Hey, guys. How you doing? It's Montpelier police right. officer John Martin's day off. When he's not walking the beat, his community commitment stays with him. Don't forget to see, Bill. Yeah, buckle up. We're the cop, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Once a week, he volunteers with two high school athletes for some one-on-one -on -one training. Okay. Great. Okay, good. Zero minutes here. One. Zero. Zero. Martin has some new recruits. Special Olympians, Sean Start and John Willis. Try not to hang on too much onto these. Try to use the your legs. Oh, see? There you go. There you go. Both compete as snowshoers, and both say Officer Martin will get them into top shape for the World Winter Games. Hopefully strong. And lose some weight. Know that. Mostly strong. Just gonna be just like your race. You may not be first, but just keep going. Martin doesn't Watch give the two up. any slack, only encouragement. Just think how heavy those snowshoes are gonna be. Holy moly. Fitness is a way of life for him. He races in Iron Man competitions. And I always think, yeah, I've worked really hard, but these guys work really hard too, and they have a lot of obstacles to overcome, and I can overcome any obstacles thrown in front of me. That's why I always finish. Lessons that rub off. Both athletes have learning impairments, but at the gym, they learn fast. I just keep on going to get this much more ways to go and this much more ways to go. After 10 minutes of stairs and bikes, it's time for treadmill, a workout that leaves the two out of breath. Stair stepper. I didn't quite like that one. It's hard, it's tiring, and I'm going to probably sleep tonight. The training gives these Special Olympians yeah. confidence in their ability. Most likely, I'll probably get gold if I keep on doing what I'm doing now. And confidence they will come home winners. Hey, I, I work hard today. I owe you that. Good job. I'm proud of you all. Kristen Carlson, Channel 3 News, Berlin. Way to go, guys. Yeah, Miller, that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, weather, you know. <laughs> Not so great. <laughs> it's just boring. Nothing's happening in the weather today. Just like yesterday, nothing happened in the weather, including no sunshine. Today, maybe a peak or two of sunshine. That's about it, 48 to 55 for highs. Tomorrow, cloudy too, but uh, at least something will happen. Rain will develop late in the day. That'll continue Thursday night into Friday as well, and maybe a lingering shower into Saturday. Otherwise, right now, the weekend, for the most part, looking dry. A mix of sun and clouds with highs in the 40s. So, you know, with all the election excitement going on, it's a good thing nothing's happening in the weather. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, Gary. Well, coming up in our next half hour, we'll take a look at the link between smoking and anxiety. Stay with us.